I've been recording this already. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> why don't you say something that this is okay, started this in is, the This is being recorded. Our, my apologies. We we got involved in the conversation and forgot to start the recording. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. We're living by the Jenkins rule, the code of conduct. Please be nice to each other. So I was just mentioning GitHub suggestions. And what I wanted to do was show that because it's at least for me, so helpful to, to be able to use a GitHub suggestion to recommend a change to someone else quite precisely. Do you have an open PR you can use, Mark? There are plenty of them right here, yeah. yeah okay. So if we look at, let's see, if um, we look at this one, this was a proposed change, and I think, here we go. Uh -huh. so, so this pull request was submitted and it actually, we look down here at the bottom and we see that all checks have failed. And when I looked to see why the checks had failed, it was because this line right here, if you look at line number 17, it has a single equal sign at the front, mm -hmm. preceded by another line with a single equal sign. And ASCII doc will not, allow, that's a, sec, a level one heading, and ASCII doc will only allow one level one heading per document. So ASCII doc was just crashing. So I opened up this edit thing right here and let's just do it again. I click the plus minus thing here that says insert a suggestion and it will copy the existing text. I put my correction in, I put some comment about only one level one uh, heading per document. ASCII doc requirement. And now when I update that comment, and now to the to the contrib the contributor, they can click this commit suggestion and right from here create a git commit with my change in it. They can even, and now we got to cancel out of it, they can even do multiple commits at a time, multiple changes at a time, by going to the file change, files change tab, scrolling down and add each suggestion to a batch. And then they can commit all the changes in a single change by pressing the button up at the very top, commit suggestions. And now it, it lets them commit it right there. They've never had to go to the command line. They've never had to invoke a local copy of the thing. It's all done through the GitHub web interface. And now I have to unselect all those things because I don't really want, this is one, sometimes because of, because of, because I have write permission to this, I can actually commit, oh, rats, that was not what I wanted. Cancel. And do not add the batch. Remove from batch. There we go. So Mark, while you're in here, why don't you just pull up a line that's not commented and show what the icon, because I did not find that icon obvious. Oh, oh, good. Okay. So something like. Go back it, to the files changed. Yeah. So, so go back. Okay. So go back to files changed. Just right click it and then you can leave this tab alone. And then if I wanted to adjust something else like this one, the plus sign here, and then this icon right there, insert a suggestion. Is that what right. you were yes, pointing yes, to? Yes, yes, yes. So, and, and it just, it, it lets me stay focused inside the web browser for reviews and for simple changes. Now, I don't know that you do something like this with wholesale code changes. But for grammatical changes or minor corrections, it's, it's quite helpful. It is. Otherwise, I used to get these comments that were, you know, it would be much better if you said the rather than an here. And I've got to read that and translate it and everything, whereas somebody, in, you know, it takes a long time to write that. And it takes a long time for me to read, digest, and then go in. It's a trivial change. So you right. can just replace. And also, sometimes, you know, when you're writing, 
you think just changing this word to that word is going to make it good and then you see it and it's like oh whoops we need to do a little more here so um do are you guys familiar if you wanted to open the whole file for editing and do a pr to a pr are you familiar with how to do that so that i'm not sure i'm familiar with Meg, do you right want there to do us click and okay. right click on edit file i like that so i've got another tab and i can go back to this one okay and then it's an editor i mean it's a primitive editor i wish they would give me vi but i love vi so but there is the whole file in source and you can edit anything you want to in that and then down at the bottom um you click create a new branch for this commit and you want to give it a description um up And this will then be submitted against the author's report or against the pull request author's <coughs> branch, not against the against the central thing that I was reviewing. Is that correct, Meg? Right. And the one the one tricky thing is that the author does not always get good notification of these things. So when I do one after you click that proposed file change, um, if you're not you know we're care we're pretty friendly here we're a small group so we i usually just merge it into the other one but you're not after you click that i take the url and then when i put in my comments i like i'm approving but you need with this with this pr added in or i'm not i'm blocking it until you put this pr in but but i give them the link somewhere or in a comment uh somewhere because We've had problems that people just didn't see it and they went ahead and and then it's a little messy. It's clean up a bowl, but it's messier. Thanks. Yeah, now I'm not gonna submit this one. I don't want to confuse no. confuse Karthik. I forget to I'm I don't want to confuse the the author of this one, so I'm just gonna cancel. Yeah. All right, so we've we've addressed GitHub suggestions, and we've talked about pull requests to a pull request. Ah, uh, and I think the summary too was I never make an actual change to somebody else's PR. Oh, and, right? and that's that's different than me. So that's uh, Meg's not nearly as bold or as crass as I am because or as smart or experienced or knowledgeable. Let's add too. Sometimes directly alter. PR rather than and and that's something you actually control as a submitter. You have an option when you submit a pull request to disallow uh, those with right permission from making any changes to your PR. And that's perfectly okay as well. So you could block that behavior. There, there, there are those who are particularly as they're initially learning, find it, oh, it's helpful that somebody else did three or four changes that switched me from having a broken build to a working build. Is it uh, done through checkout of PR? Mark, do you know how to uh, uh, prohibit changing of PR or it's dependent on uh, privileges or? Uh, I think here, let's, mm -hmm. let's show an example of it. I think the way you do it, Vlad, is that when you're creating the PR, you there's a checkbox on the create pr page that will let you control if others are allowed to to modify this pr let's let's do one just to see so how about i know how about this let's go to a different repository so we're going to borrow another repository for now and Oh, that probably won't help. I need one that is one of mine. That I don't control so I can submit a PR to something that like How about a PR to Ah 
we'll borrow this one and then stop it. Good. So I think if I were to change this readme, and ah, here's a good one. We've replaced this with plugins testing it. Sorry, uh, doing one of the problems of doing things live is I want to make it actually good enough to use. It works. Okay. So this is a fix to a plugin. So I've edited the readme file and removed the reference to the wiki and instead replaced it with a reference to plugins.jenkins.io. And so now uh, replace wiki reference with plugins.jenkins.io. Let's create a new branch and replace wiki reference. Okay, propose the file change. And now if I remember correctly, there will be somewhere down here below. Oh, where am I? Where is it that I'm not seeing it? I was expecting a checkbox. I'll have to go looking for it now. I was expecting uh, Side of the green button has a arrow pointed from the out. Yeah, this, I, I believe it. So that's not quite what I was, let's see. Uh, I, I uh, noticed that uh, GitHub uh, released uh, some new CLI called GH, which it is in beta, and they are saying that it will be totally available by the end of this year. And they have in GH something called uh, checkout PR. And my assumption was I hadn't explored it uh, like uh, uh, enough to uh, to make sure that it is uh, exactly what it uh, tells about. But it looks like this checkout PR may be that you are submitting PR and after that checking out, preventing other people from modifying it. But this is just assumption. I haven't explored it yet. Yeah. So, and I use Hub PR checkout all the time, and I love it. Or what what will be GH PR checkout, and it works great. But it's the the other side of this coin. It's instead of this is me telling a developer. You, you're not allowed to modify my, my pull request. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. I, I was expecting to see a checkbox here. Now, Jonathan, you, you, you indicated one and I didn't quite hear you. Could you say it again? I saw this option one time ago, but uh, I can't remember the place where it is right now. Okay, well, let's, we'll just keep looking and, and learn together. So this is what a good. Is at the, what's the icon at the end of where you put your title of your PR? Uh, oh, you that's my that, that's, that's my last pass trying to help me fill in passwords. Oh, okay. So that's that's definitely not it. It's I very kind looking, of I, it to offer to complete my passwords for me, but yes, I was looking for something somewhere. I thought I saw three dots or a hamburger or something. <laughs> well, it and, might and be that a, that could be it. It might be an obscure, one of those obscure, obscure things. Expand down, no. The button to send it. Yeah, let's just go ahead and create it and create let's it, see yeah. if it will yeah, then, maybe. then allow us a separate checkbox somewhere. No, was it? I don't see it. Well, if, if I find that, I will let you know what that trick is because I'm, I'm reasonably confident that I've seen it where I could disallow others from 
even with their authority on that repository, on the target repository, from modifying my pull request. Or from and adding. I it. always reread the whole thing before I actually merge it. Yeah. So, okay. Things Sorry. Happen. So that, that side trip didn't help anybody. For my apologies. Thanks for your patience. But but you fixed a bad XREF, so that's good. <laughs> right, right. That's good. Okay. So we've talked to that one. Uh, the next one on my list was how do I build the Jenkins docs from source? Now, Jonathan and Vlad, I think this may already be wasted effort. I believe the two of you are already actually building from source, aren't you? Uh, I'm building uh, from source using my computer, but I can try it using any other platforms or any other environments. And, and I'm using Mac OS. Okay. Yeah. And Jonathan, Jonathan, are you building? Have you run a make run? You. Yeah. Okay. So, so this may not be familiar to you. Yeah. So, so make run is used to build the Jenkins.io site. Build I use make. Yeah. I use make to to my. Make run and source of Jenkins. Okay, well, so let's let's show that because at least for me, it it helps me. So I'm going to make text much much bigger. Oh, big, not little. Uh, you're going the wrong direction, just in case yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, wildly the wrong direction. Okay, is that text readable? Very readable. So, so this is your local clone of your fork of Jenkins IO, right? Exactly. And first I'm going to sync with the uh, whoops, hub uh, sync sync with the copy from the master. And then let's check and I am now let's get onto the master branch. Okay, so the command to it, and this is all described in the contributing file, right? If we look for make run Think. Yes, here it is. Make targets. And it talks about all clean, prepare, generate, and this one, run, which runs a live reloading development server. So I can do a make run, leave the make running. It'll just sit there and it will monitor the file system. If I alter any file from another window, it detects the altered file and allows me to load it and display it. So in this case, I just type the command make run and it's going to, oh, whoops, it would help if I turned off the make that was already running. Obviously I've done this, <laughs> make run. And what this will do is download a Docker image of the site generator tool we use, Awestruct, and then build the site. The site is now built and being delivered to this location, port 4242 on my local computer. Now, because I'm a Windows user and this is a Linux box, I have to do one more step. I have to turn on a tunnel that tunnels my port 4042 on my local host to my Linux machine. So that's what this row here is, is me running that tunnel. And now if I bring up my web browser, and again, this is Windows. So Windows, Windows is possible to run this, but Oleg does it all the time, but I'm not running it there. So here you see the site running on localhost 4042, 4242. And then I could make changes. We could do all sorts of other fun things. Any questions there? No, very nice. No, thank you. 
But uh, uh, when I need to use the big one, the, when I, uh, working with the site issues to change the content, Okay, Jonathan, your your sound cut out again. It, it, it clipped. You you were asking about GitHub issues. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I need to run the Jinx in this to change the website from the GitHub IO or any issue. Well, so so it's it's up to you if you decide to run make run or not. But but it's certainly the the CI job will do a make run, and if you haven't done make run first, and it gets to the CI job and is broken, the CI job will fail, and most reviewers won't even bother to review it if they see the CI job is failing. All right, I get so it. Thank you. It's usually the hint is if the CI job fails, there may be something so broken with the pull request that it's not yet worth time for a human being to review it. I got it. Thank you. And that's where you use make site, right, Mark? I saw that go by in your help file. If uh, you're messing with the Right, you could you could also use make site run. I believe run and site do the same thing where site generates it statically and run will do the the automatic reloading thing. Okay. Let me check uh. that just to be sure. There was one that did both site and run or something. Yeah, let's let's go there and take a look at it. It's good to good to read. Okay, contributing. Okay. And make targets. So site generates the file statically. And and that's a little heavier weight than live reloading because by generating the pages statically it has to do a lot of it has to compute every page whereas the live reloading only generates that only computes the pages that you actually load now oh there's a gap here and vlad you would be the one who would probably point out to me this gap one of the targets is missing from this list there's a target that checks for broken links isn't that what it's called, Vlad, is check broken links or some such thing? Yes, I guess we need to go directly to the make file and inside the make file there is... Well, yeah, that's if we go back here to the it looks top, like mm -hmm. make file there. And then there is check broken links here. Right. And it's imperfect. It doesn't find them all, but it's relatively low cost and the ones it finds are quite accurate. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for pointing this out. Let's put the note there. We need to need to document. Uh, check broken links target okay any other questions that you have yes yeah, just a question uh, there is some uh, sec So the, so the instructions on make run are right inside the contributing file. And here they talk about building and it, it describes in depth what, what you need. You need this, at least this version of Docker. Here are the things that you'll need. What we don't have right now is we don't have the precise instructions for using Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL, to run it, this is this is already assuming that layer is installed, or that you're running Linux or Mac OS. Did that address your question, Jonathan? It 
It did. Okay. Sorry. Audio is still a challenge there. Sorry about that, Jonathan. My fun. All right. Yeah, I think, well, I think we've covered the topics that, that I wanted to be sure we covered. Anything else that either of you would like to cover today? So we just go in and randomly choose a task. Are there certain themes we're concentrating on for this week? Um, so both, both are, the answer is yes to both. Okay. So, so Jenk, the, the Jenkins site is now using GitHub for its issues rather than, than Jira. And so we use the issues tab here. And if you choose wiki migration, these are all the things where we have some document existing in the wiki that doesn't yet exist as far as we can tell in www.jenkins.io. So they need to migrate and there are instructions inside these things that will tell you how you can do that migration with some tools that Gavin Mogan has created to follow these wiki migration guidelines that talks about, hey, do these steps to let it help you with the migration. Uh, then in terms of choosing which one, uh, best to choose one that does not have an assignee. So here, for instance, Jonathan's is listed right at the top. Uh, look at the one, at any one you choose, check that there are no comments which say someone is taking that one. So for instance, this one, KR Harsh 17 has taken it. So while I'm here, I'm going to put his name on it. So Kumar's got that one, but find one that others have not taken and just put a comment in it that says, I'm working on this one. And that's your reservation. So for these, we assume that the content is okay and we just need to reformat, et cetera, right? No, or actually it's, it's much more, it's much more thought, thoughtful than that. We, we assume the content is a good starting point and ask that you think about it as you're making the transformation. Okay, so one should not take a, a plugin that one has no experience or knowledge of. Well, in, and in these cases, these things are, most of these are actual pages on the wiki that are not related to a plugin. They're more general okay. information. Okay. And, but, and in that case, what we're relying on is new people come in, they can make the transformation, they transform as best they can, and then the reviewers add additional things. And in the process of reviewing, the new contributors learn, oh, oh, I'm not supposed to use the word slave. I should use mm -hmm. the word agent. Those kinds yes. of things. And that's, that's a great way to do it. It's sort of you learn by experience the kinds of things that are generally broken in the wiki pages that we have to transition to. OK. Uh, Mark, just one case uh, uh, which I experienced today, for instance, somebody put an issue for Jenkins.io documentation saying that there are there is duplication of uh, different uh, uh, different topics in two sections of our uh, uh, documentation, and there was an issue on it. So, uh, is there any process uh, uh, how to uh, uh, discuss resolve? Should we discuss just in GitHub uh, doing comments on this issue or we should move to Gitter uh, application to discuss this to our uh, SIG docs or good. there is no process? Mm -hmm. Good, good question. I'm not aware of a process, but I think what you would want to do is, for instance, there is a group called, let's, let's take an example. Let's see, that one is a really good example that you had. Uh, where is the duplicate? It was something about... Oh, uh, just duplicate is... Oh, there it is, content duplication right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so one of the things that you could mention here is at copy editors, if you, if you say, if you, at Jenkins Ash Info slash copy editors, you can now ask a question that will be cause notification to be sent to everyone in the copy editors group 
so that they can offer their opinions. I see. Thank you. And, and this is a great excuse to do it. Then you keep the conversation in GitHub and we, we, get, the, we get the conversation attached to the, the thing we're working on. Exactly. Now, one of the tricks that I learned just two days ago actually was that GitHub will also, um, will also mark bugs as duplicates of each other if we put the word duplicates and let's see if I can find, yes, here we go. I put in here just the phrase duplicate of number 3204 and they saw my text and did this link inside of it so that now these two bugs are actually connected to each other. Hmm. And now if I go to 3204, we will see not only is that one, one connected, but there are several, if we look down at the bottom here, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six that are all connected to it, just because I said duplicate of number 3204. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah, this here, this this particular page is an example of one of the hard ones. This one really requires requires specific skill from somebody who knows how to configure reverse proxies in Apache and Nginx with IP mm. tables. It's this one. Meg needs Damien, and I, yeah. I I invited him to come help with this. One. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right, then I would propose we call this one done. Thanks very, very much. We'll plan to meet again thank in you, one week. You. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Nice meeting you bye guys. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you too. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.